Hello everyone, I'm the Back Humanator. I'm Buster. And this week in Toku, we're going to be discussing a buttload of figure arts news, all kinds of fun upcoming stuff in the world of Kamen Rider, and the premiere of that new Godzilla show. But before all that, Buster, how you doing? I'm okay. Kind of. You, sure you said that in a very uneasy way. <laughs> No, I like. I just like. I'm. I'm a bit mixed. There's high highs, low lows. It's just been all over the place in my brain. It has been a time lately. We're 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 really in it right now. We're in the holiday season. We're going through it. Yeah, that's how it feels. <laughs> like literally today, and and this is not this is not to like publicly shame you or anything. But I had you and three other people sniping at me about stuff as I was on the way out of work, and I was like, God damn, let me clock out. Yeah, sorry. I, I just I just added you and Boingo because of some Superman news that happened, and I'm like, I want the take on it. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, lot lot going on right now in both our lives. Uh, you'll you'll figure it all out in a few weeks' time. But uh, right now we're just we're just trying to make it happen. You know, it's the week of Thanksgiving, so uh, happy Thanksgiving to happy anyone. Freebirds Day. Yeah, a- anyone who fucking celebrates. I hope you have a good one. Uh, I hope you listen to Saturday morning panels because it's dropping on Thanksgiving this month. Um, and uh, you know, um, try not to go too psycho mode on your relatives. Just a little. Just a little. Uh, but uh, what you should go psycho mode on is engaging with the algorithm, because the only way this podcast survives is if you do the YouTube things. Like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell in order to enable notifications so that you get every single episode of This Week in Toku delivered right to your sub box, along with all the other great productions we do here at Modular Media, like Analytical Fanboys, a monthly media club podcast, Modular Components, a nice little hangout and shoot the shit show, uh, the No Prize podcast, where we talk about comics and all associated media, and Saturday Morning Panels, which is a G.I. Joe and Transformers podcast. So if any of those things interest you, be sure to do the YouTube things. Also follow us on social media. we got a Twitter. It's at The Modular Media. we got a Blue Sky. It's at ModularMedia.BSky.Social. And we have a Tumblr, which is just at Modular Media. But... That's all the plugging and tugging I got to do this week, so let's get right into the news. And first up, we do have a bit of a downer, unfortunately. Uh, listeners might recall the ongoing saga that is Junya Ikata's personal shit getting flung into the public news sector. And uh, that is continuing, unfortunately, because he has been arrested a second time for the exact same thing he was arrested for the first time. Um, I I went through and actually Google translated this whole article because the only place I could find an article about it was a Japanese uh, a Japanese site a Japanese news site, um, and the description of the crime is basically the same as what happened the last time. He was arrested for special fraud because him and another guy were trying to uh, get. A um, elder person to try and uh, hand over their ATM card, basically. Um, which uh, you know, once is a uh, ooh, that's that's kind of sucky. But you you can maybe bounce back from that. Maybe it was all a mistake or a misunderstanding or or something like that. A second time is like, bro, what you doing? What you doing over there? Get your shit together. You're better than this. Come on now. Yeah, very unfortunate. Yeah, that's real. That's really all there is to say. We don't have a ton of details beyond what I've already given. Uh, you can check out uh, that story as well as everything else we're going to talk about this week via the news links in the video description. But um, yeah, uh, I I don't pray, but if I was, I'd be praying that man turns his life around because uh, I honestly found him quite an inspiring individual up until a couple months ago. But um, let's move on to something that is inspiring, at least in as far as inspiring you to save your gosh darn money for upcoming purchases because <laughs> Tomashi Nations had their big winter event of 2023 this last weekend and we got a ton of SH Figuarts and Memorial 
Tale Edition news out of that. Uh, and I'm just going to go in order of all the uh, articles I have here from Toku Nation. Um, so first up, we got a better look at the SH Gigawatt's Common Rider Kachard Steam Hopper. Uh, it looks a little better in the action pose they have it here, but I'm still not fully in love with it. Um, you got anything to add to what we said about that one preview image last week, Buster? Uh, yeah, I think it looks great. I'd, I'd be down to have this on my shelf. Okay, fair enough. Uh, they also showed off Gold Dash, so yeah, he will be getting his bike fairly soon. Uh, uh, it says display only, actually, which is going to be a phrase we're going to be hearing a lot in this week's episode because a lot of these items are display only, which means it's 50-50 if they're going to come out or not. Yeah, I didn't see the placard for Gold Dash, so I just assumed he was getting a release fairly soon. But yeah, uh, it's it's been a thing with Bandai SH Figure Arts for a long time. Display only basically means they're showing it to us to see how much we want it. Um, but, yeah, there's uh, been quite a few new bikes that they showed that are display only, so... Yeah, uh, but uh, continuing on with Gachard stuff, they also showed off Valvard, who has already gone up for pre-order this week, um, and he's looking really good, actually. I like him a little bit better than uh, Gachard. They they really captured his, his puffy pants quite well, I think. Yeah, oh, that, this is a really beautiful figure. I really want this. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, that's good. Let me, let me, uh... Yeah, it's uh, it's a Tamashi web product, so it will be a little bit harder to get a hold of, but not impossible. Certainly, Team Rider will have us covered. Yeah. Um, um, Fi stuff? Yeah, uh, not Fi's. We're going to go ahead and move on to Geats right now, um, because uh, they did show off a couple of new things for Geats. Um, I'm not sure if they've shown the Boost Striker before. This is the first time no, I'm seeing have, it. Yeah, this is the first time I'm seeing it, too. Uh, once again, display only. Yeah, but it it looks really good. I actually like it. A, like I I generally like most bikes a little bit better than Gold Striker because Gold Striker is not a terrible bike, but it's a little bulkier than I like my bikes. Um, but uh, yeah, this this looks pretty good. Uh, hopefully, it gets a release. I doubt it's gonna transform like it does in the show, though. Oh yeah, that that would be way too complicated for Gold Striker. Bikes almost never transform, but. Uh, one thing uh, that I am really, really excited about is uh, Geats 9 got unveiled, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Maybe a yes. tiny bit off from the suit, but it's close enough that, like, damn, I want it, and it's display only, so no idea if it's going to happen yet or not. I prob it'll probably happen in, like, either a year's time, so we'll, we'll see it eventually, because I think Geats was pretty popular enough to, like, warrant it. I mean, yeah. Build Genius eventually came out, like, five years later. Yeah. Um, but uh, now moving on to Fies, uh, they showed off basically prototypes for all of the bikes, getting Sinchoku Seho releases, and they all look really, really good and really, really accurate. Um, and they're all display only. <laughs> yeah, they're all display only, and they're all probably not going to transform but hey you could still go back and get the old um robot mode auto vagin figure arts because i think that's kicking around ebay somewhere yeah speaking um, of display only kikes uh sinchoku seho oh fuck dude this thing looks so good i, I hope I, it actually comes out me too. Like, I don't. I don't have a lot of love for Fies, but I, I love Kaixa as exactly as much as the next guy. And um, uh, I've been I've been jonesing for them to do a Sinchoku Seho since Fies got announced. So this looks this looks as good as that Fies Sinchoku Seho, and hopefully it gets a release, much like all the Fies next figure arts are probably going to be getting releases because we got a better look at Fies next himself as well as a prototype for um kaiza next and display they only yep and uh they both look really really good uh if you like those suits um the the helmet on fies i didn't realize exactly how long out from the face that like goggle visor thing is it looks a little goofy when viewed from the side now but uh the rest of the toy still looks pretty dang good yeah, I think Kikes' helmet, like, I really like the helmet now seeing it in figure arts form. Uh, yeah. 
It definitely, it definitely has a little something to it that the suit doesn't. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it, it's it's very striking here. Yeah. Um, Let's but, go even further back in Heisei. Yeah, because we are getting. Um, I think this is the final Sinchoku Seiho they can do for Kuga. I don't think there's any um, other suits they haven't done in Sinchoku Seiho yet, because we are getting Rising Titan, and this is already announced for pre order. It's going to be shipping um, in April of next year, and my goodness, it looks gorgeous. I mean, this is already my favorite of the Rising forms, so. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm very very tempted to get it. Yeah, it's good. This is pro Titan forms as Kuga's best form, so it's like yeah, that's good figure arts. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, moving on to the world of Super Sentai, uh, we got the unveiling of a um display only Sinchoku Seho Kyoryu Red, um, who looks really really good. Uh, not the Biggest improvement from the original, in in my opinion, just looking at this one prototype. But um, it's definitely understandable that they would do this with Kyoryu's 10th anniversary happening, and with um, uh, Daigo being such a popular character. Yeah, I have seen people compare this to the Lightning Collection figure, being like, "Ah, oh, this looks so much better." Well, it's like, no, no shit, this is fifty dollars. The mm -hmm. other figure was $20. And I mean, the Lightning Collection figure is still pretty dang good. Remember, it was an improvement on that original figure art skill you read. Yeah. Um, uh, a... I have seen some people complaining about this, though, in an indirect way of saying, like, hey, you're doing a 10th anniversary Kyoryuger thing. Where's my 10th anniversary Sinchoku Seiho Gaim? And to that, I say, calm down, wait for the spring event. That's probably when we'll see that stuff, because yeah. that's happening. Yeah. Yeah, well, well Gaim, Gaim's gonna get that's due soon. Yeah, I have I have absolutely no doubt about it. But uh, one thing that absolutely surprised myself and I think a lot of others is that there was a Memorial Edition announcement at this show, and it's the freaking D Sword Vega Doggy Kruger Shadow Saber is getting a um, Memorial Edition release, and it looks. Oh, it looks fucking beautiful. Oh, I want it so bad. Oh, Buster, you gotta hold me back from hitting that pre-order button on this. I, I'll try, but I, I, I love this form. I love, like, wolf heads or, like, heads of animals that form into swords. So it's yeah. like, this is, do this is doing stuff for me, you know? Yeah, I, I think I've talked about it once or twice before, and, and we don't really cover Power Rangers too much over here, but this is a Sentai item, so it allows me to talk about... Yeah, Do Doggy Kruger's episodes where he becomes a ranger in SPD is what solidified me into a Power Rangers fan, which is what put me on the road to being a Toku fan. So I have a lot of love for all things Shadow Ranger slash Deca Master. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's uh, that's that's the one okay, role play I thing. Can, now I can go nuts. Yeah, Ooh. because we uh, we got the uh, official like full. They're not trying to hide anything. Uh, reveal of SH Figure Arts Ultraman Rising, and yeah, he is exactly as lanky and fucking Dorito chested as the animation model, and it's it's kind of glorious. Yeah, and it comes with the kaiju baby. What I, like legit when I when I saw they were doing a figure arts, I'm like, come with the kaiju baby, and it even has a bit of articulation to it, which is more than I expected. Mm -hmm. So I'm winning, and not only that, uh, I'm just gonna jump around with Ultraman figure arts. If you yeah, because I'm not sure what else is new here, honestly. Guys, they're doing a Senchoku Seho of my favorite Ultraman, Gaia, specifically his version two counterpoint, which you know that's that's his definitive version, but like they're doing Senchoku Seho Gaia. I gotta get this. <laughs> oh. It does. It does look very nice. Yeah, they. Ju it's just one promo image, no prototype yet, but it's happening. It's probably happening. Mm -hmm. uh, Is that we'll like a, a notable kaiju he's fighting there? Wait. Uh, no. The, the Gaia one is at the end. Like it's the little. Oh shit. Oh, oh, okay. I was looking at the first image, thinking that was him. No, that's a uh, orb. Oh. Okay. Uh, but like that. That's from. Okay. This is. I think this is. I think it's from the orb movie. Or like mm. one of the Ultraman War movies. Uh, they also showed a couple villains. Uh, so nice. Uh, Hunter Knight Sarugi from Mebius is also getting a figure art, which, you know, I haven't seen Mebius yet, but oh, that looks good. And mm -hmm. uh, they got more images of the Blazar figure arts, which, yeah, again, looks, still looks great. Yeah. Um, 
good good stuff good stuff all around from this event yeah oh red king is also getting a figure art from the original ultraman i could have sworn red king already had a figure art um is this in Chokuseho? he he was the one i saw and i was like i'm pretty sure he's had a toy he's had a figure art before but i don't know if it's this might be a Sinchoku Seho. Yeah. I don't, know. I don't I don't know Ultraman figure arts all that well. But what I do know is um, Flame Toys has announced that pre-orders for their Pacific Rim model kits are coming very, very soon. I think we talked about them announcing they had gotten the license uh, a few months back. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not much of a model kit guy, but I am very excited to see what these look like. Because Flame Toys has done some really cool stuff with the Transformers former's license in the past yeah good i hope the toys turn out good and people can do some good figure photography mm -hmm. now on to some good shard news because we've gotten a lot of drops about upcoming upgrade forms for Gachard, uh mainly that he's going to have uh two sort of side grades to his upcoming uh x upgrade item that being uh dragon x and ufo x and i love both of these honestly they look so fucking toyetically goofy yeah um yeah, yeah, just really good. I love the first one. The first one's the best one, uh, because we really like the color scheme. I think I think that's a genuinely good suit. The second one's more goofy, but I still like it a lot. Yeah, they're uh, they they look like freaking Mattel toys from the mid two thousands, and I love that. I love that. That's that's my aesthetic to a T. Um, but uh, if you're into more of the kind of uh, um dark color palette, cool guy suits, uh, hey, guess what? We got a brand new common rider, everybody. The secondary of Gachard has finally been unveiled, and he's a spooky kill you man. Common rider Dread is coming. Well, he's technically not a secondary. They're advertising him as a villain rider. He's the second rider to show up in the show. He's the secondary. Shut up, Toei. Oh, my God. <laughs> Revice. That's... <laughs> also, Geats. With... Oh, is, like, Geats the second... Is Buff the Buff of the secondary? Because he's the second rider to show up? Like, it's, yeah, it's, Buff it's... is the secondary. That's the way they're built all throughout the show. Well, Buff is more like the... Vi whatever. I... I... Cool. I love this concept. I love the concept for Dread because it's basically like, hey, you know all those forms we're not going to use? Let's use them as father for him to transform. Yeah, because he has to sacrifice uh, Kemi cards in order to transform, which is a good a good way to justify those forms not getting used anymore. But man, that, that really illustrates just how much we're going to be chugging through suits in this series. Yeah, uh, although I do think... With how limited, because th this gives them only a finite of transformation items. I think they're going to save Dread for, like, every fifth episode. Like, he won't be a constant presence, but he'll be, like, a big... When he transforms, you know, oh, shit's going down. That's how mm -hmm. I'm viewing it, at least. Now, and I, the, I do... The next time preview of the most recent episode also hints very much at Dread being a character that's already in the show. Who do you think it's going to be? I don't know. <laughs> Hmm. I, I'm just gonna let it go by. I'm not really like a guy to be like, it's this guy, it's this guy. They're building up. No, no, I'm just, you know. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, Common Rider Dread coming soon to a um Ill illegally gained file near you. Uh, much like the Common Rider Gachard X Common Rider Geats Winter Movie. It seems like uh, I was right. They're they're officially just calling it the Winter Movie, and yeah. uh, it looks pretty fun. Yeah, I uh, got some chemis. We get the main villain, the X Wizard. Uh, and we also get to see the new form, uh, which people thought was the main form. It might appear in the show proper, but like, I kind of like, because it does use his like, its arms and legs are a part of the side grades we've already seen, but it seems like this will be like the pr more built up form. I don't know. It's, just, it's X Geats Super Gachard. I don't, not X Geats. It's, it's called Super Gachard X Assembled or Star Gachard. It looks good. Yeah, it's, it's a fine form. Not, I saw not a lot of people quite as into my aesthetic as the other two boys, but I don't hate it. Yeah, it's it's fine. I, I like it more the more I see it, honestly. Mm -hmm. He looks a bit like when they try and make a, a regular Henshin hero suit that's evocative of like a mecha because he's got like different little bits for his boots and gauntlets. Yeah, um, I do like that kind of part of the suit. Uh, but, but yeah, no, looks looks solid. Movie looks interesting. Uh, hopefully, it's not shit. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking and speaking of, of shit. <laughs> oh, you beat me to it. Uh, Sh- Shingoku modeling project Tetra Boy. He's coming out soon, and Bandai put out a bunch of new pretty promotional images for him. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting this because I don't do model kits that often, but uh, man, uh, I do like me some Tetra Boy, and they yeah. did him some real justice here. Yeah, it's good, good gun. Good gun. Good gun boy. Yeah, the original Target Master, finally getting a Masterpiece toy. Yeah. Uh, But uh, now it's time for just a bit of clarification, because I think we already knew this for a while, but it seemed that we needed to go and reiterate it for a lot of very stupid people recently, um, which is that in the official Toei blog for King Oger, they have clarified that they did cast um, audition people of all genders to play Rita, because Rita... His entire character is supposed to be about neutrality, hence the gender not mattering, hence non-binary character. Stop being an asshole about it. Yeah, th- this all came in the wake of the next episode being a focus episode for Rita, which I'm very excited for. Yeah, it's it looks interesting. Um, much like Godzilla whiskey looks interesting to me because whiskey is actually my liquor of choice. I'm a big uh, I'm a big Jim Bean fan. Jim Bean and honey, ooh, that's that's the tasty stuff. That's what I like when I'm not drinking beer. Um, but a uh, 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 specific brewery in Japan uh, is making uh, whiskeys based off of Godzilla, Mecha Godzilla, and. Um, Who's this guy again? With the fluffy see. ears? I, I, I closed the... Is this from the Heisei thing? Let me check. No, this is Showa. Uh, that is... Ag- Aguirus? Yeah. Aguirus? Freaking Aguirus getting his own licensed whiskey. My goodness, what a time to be alive. Um, Why did they use the raids again, Aguirus? I have no idea. Uh, I, I will... <sighs> I don't think I can justify importing specialty licensed whiskey, but man, if I ever get the opportunity to try these, like if I ever go to G-Fest and I see these available, man, I'll have to jump on it because this is just this is just my kind of goofy right here. Yeah, I mean, it would just be nice to have the bottle, you know, mm-hmm. like, definitely. It, yeah, but uh, that's all the news that's fit to print this week. So, Buster, why don't you take us on to the new releases? Ultraman Blazar, episode 18, The Towering Terror. Ooh, they brought out the good kaiju this week. The big like, long boy, big long boy. He looked like an armored pee-pee, just a little Muppet man. I love him. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the Muppet episode of Blazar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just start singing, it's time to play the music. <laughs> Yeah, he's, or he's like one of the one of the little singing plants that's in the background of the big musical number at the end of Little Pet Shop of Horrors. Horror. Yeah. <laughs> it does kind of have that vibe. Uh, but yeah, it's, oh, it's a good kaiju, despite our jokes. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a really solid episode, because like, the action and the conspiracy is really ramping up, but at the same time, uh, there's, there's a little disturbance in Gento's home life, and he's got he's to gotta put being a dad first for a minute, and it's, uh, it's real sweet. I, yeah. I love whenever we get focus for Gento's family, honestly. It's it's good stuff, and it's like I kind of like how it's sparingly used because it's like it, it, it hits you like, oh yeah, he's a family man. It, it makes it feel more special, you know. Mm-hmm. And it it puts you in his headspace because he's clearly forgetting about how important his family is from time to time. So whenever it comes up, you're you're um like, oh shit, that's right. He he needs to go and see them right now, like he is. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, it's ter- it's clearly the beginning of a two-parter, because the monster's not dead yet, so, you know. Yeah, also the monster fucking digivolved into a monster from earlier on in the series, so I wonder yeah. what's gonna happen with that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was just suit reuse, but, like, maybe they're gonna use that to, like, flesh out well, the Well, they lore. brought up that monster from earlier in the series, as well as Bazanga, so I'm, I'm guessing, like... There's there's something about yeah. this particular evolutionary line of kaiju that's tied into the conspiracy Emmy's been investigating. Yeah, well, probably like the the next episode's hinting that we're gonna get all the answers or like the answers are coming. So yeah, here's hoping. Uh, mm. but, okay, know. 
Good, Good episode. episodes. All right, uh, let's rip this bandaid off. Monarch Legacy of Monsters from Apple TV Plus, episode one and two. I don't think we got the titles for these episodes because who the hell cares? This it's is a streaming boring. show. It doesn't have episode titles. It's just part one of season one and part two of season one. And honestly, that's fine. Um, I liked this. But I liked it because I feel like I was going in expecting it to be what it was, which is it's it's a very lore heavy um, uh, fleshing out the backstory of shit that was just kind of mentioned to the side in the legendary Godzilla movies and the big things it's being advertised on are barely there. Like, you get a little bit of John Goodman at the beginning, you get a little bit of Kurt Russell at the end of the second episode, and there's a couple of flashbacks to Godzilla stuff here and there. Here's my thing. I knew what I was getting into, and I didn't like what I was getting into. <laughs> yeah, you were fucking messaging me, um, what was it, yesterday or the day before, going like, do I have to? Yeah, like, I just... <laughs> I just, I've kind of grown a bit sick of these spinoff shows of big movie franchises on streaming services. Like, I, I feel like it's been a common trend. I'm not even just talking about MCU stuff. I'm talking about, like, they freaking made a John Wick streaming show for, like, Peacock, because who, I guess that's, anything is possible. I mean, that's that's fair, but also, like, they were pitching that John Wick show as far back as when the first movie were co was coming out. They were like, we, we think this could be a weekly network show. Okay. Um, I, the point is, I'm just, I'm kind of sick of this kind of shit. I mean, I will give a credit. They do focus on Japan, mm -hmm. which is more than, like, any of the other legendary movies have done. It's uh, mostly Japanese characters, actually. Yeah, and I do... I, I like the characters and performances. I just don't give a shit about the concept and that the show's going for. It's like let's learn the origins of the Godzilla equivalent of Shield. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't get. I don't give a shit about that. I'm yeah, because the plot line is basically lady goes to Japan because she finds out her dad had an apartment in Japan and her and she thinks her dad's dead, and then she finds a whole other family her dad had in that apartment and she goes like oh no my dad was a two-timing shithead and then her and her half-brother discover that their their dad is the son of the two people who founded monarch who kurt russell was big friends with back when he was wyatt russell everybody got that <laughs> why are we doing this i just, just give me godzilla x kong already <laughs> That's fair, that's fair. Though I did love uh, seeing seeing friend of the show Tim Shields get some big budget work. That was nice. Uh, well, what, what are you referring to? There's a there's there's a guy who um is who works for Monarch and shows up like I think it's oh, at the beginning Tim! of the second His episode. Name is Tim. Yeah. yeah, he shows up and he's like, "Hey, I I get it. You're you're a little cautious because you're a lady in a foreign country and a strange guy just came up and started talking to you. But here, my name's Tim. Here, that's not I'm not scary anymore. I just introduced you, and Tim's not a threatening name. And I'm like, you you sir, you do not know many Tims. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just I do not give a sh I like. I will say, if I'm going to give one credit to the show, the original kaiju they made actually looked good. Yeah, it looked cool. Um, I liked the I liked the little bugaboos that hatched out of the egg. Um, Freaking legendary Ebera and I forget its name, but the spider kaiju were in the beginning of this. And that was cool to see. That was some nice fan service. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Maybe maybe it'll get better, but like I just I I don't really dig the concept, so I don't really see myself like my attitude improving. So <laughs> that's fair. I I'm willing to stomach the concept for some good acting and okay writing. Uh, there's there's no like standout scene in this in my opinion yet, but there's there's some cool little bits here and there. Um, and there's also some yikes bits here and there. Like there's a couple scenes. Uh, specifically in the flashback stuff, there were a couple moments where I was like, that's clearly either shot on a green screen or an LED screen. Like, I, I feel like I'm watching King Oger right now. Yikes. I mean, like, that's not... King Oger at least, like, has cohesion. <laughs> uh, that's, 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 that's like your opinion, man. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like, uh... uh yeah, at least um, everything looks that looks good. Not looks good, but like, how do I explain this? It looks thematically 
It looks like it all belongs. Yeah, it looks it looks fine. You know what? Uh, Not charred. <laughs> if if you like this, if if you're at least a little interested in this, it's worth checking out. But I don't think it's going to be a vital thing. Yeah, th- this feels like people said it would be better before King of the Monsters, if anything. The 2019 King of the Monsters, for the record. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like yeah, they probably- the when they're constantly name dropping Monarch, right? Yeah, that's that's the one where like Monarch's part of the plot, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they're part of the plot of all the legendary Godzilla movies. Anyway, can we talk about good shows again? Wow. Okay, rude, but yes. <laughs> Come another gotcha on episode eleven. Catch a spy there. No longer writer. This was this was a pretty solid setup episode. I didn't love it. Felt a bit off to me. Didn't really love that that whole whole like goofy sequence of just here's a bunch of PNG forms one after another. Um, and like, it's, it's nice that they're focusing on iPad boy, but it, it feels a little out of nowhere. And part of me is worried that they're only doing it because he's going to get tricked into becoming dread next episode. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like, I, like iPad boys already had enough like background. The, the, I think the cool thing about the show is that it doesn't give like, even though it doesn't give focus episodes, it's good enough in the background to like flesh these characters out. Like. Uh, the background characters out, you know what I mean? Uh, and, like, I, I thought this was a salt. And, yeah, and I also just like chasing the UFO. I thought that was some silly fun. Uh, and I do like the new f- bulky-ass form. I think that, that was a really fun form. Yeah, it definitely. It looked better than last week's bulky-ass form. I'll give it that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I, I get it. It's a lot of setup, so I can't judge where it's going now, but, like, I, I'm interested. I'm, I'm curious where it's going. Uh, it's clearly yeah. part part one of two with the dread showing or, up, or possibly free. I don't know. It feels like they're building up. They're going to be doing like one of those classic Christmas other shoe droppings, but at Thanksgiving. Possible, possible. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Uh, talk about King Oger. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Osama Sentai King Oger, episode thirty-seven, the Iroki conflict. Ooh, this was a good one. This episode kicked fucking. I loved it. This is legitimately the best episode of King Oger in months. Of course you wouldn't say that. <laughs> like, Dabowski's not even my favorite, but the characterization they did for him this episode was so fucking good. Like, it made me go from like, yeah, I like him. He's probably my secondary favorite to going like, oh, no, this man is the goat. He's the fucking goat. And I love him. I would die for this man if he was yeah. my king. Uh, do you want to talk about why you loved it? Yeah, because they basically flesh out his backstory, because it's been hinted from time to time of like, oh, he's a big old deceiver, liar, sneaky man. He he overthrew the previous monarch in order to uh, create his, his prosperous kingdom of lies. And it's revealed like, no, it was all a huge fucking tragedy. The previous monarch was an was a nice lady who was trying to do right by her people, and and he was a he was a good honest boy. And then the fucking wrath of the gods happened. Their rice got poisoned, and somebody needed to be blamed. So Iroki, the previous ruler, killed herself and told Kagaragi to take over for her. And it's like. Oh my God! You, you poor boy! You, you poor boy who has developed into this glorious man. I, 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 I feel some kind of way right now. Yeah, it's very. Oh, uh, it, go, it goes hard. It goes real mm-hmm. hard. There's, there's, e- there's even like some really good editing this episode. Like I, King Oger's editing, like it's, it's always been okay. It's been serviceable, but some of the way they transition back and forth between the flashbacks in this is just glorious. Yeah, and Kazuru Kamurocho, the series' head director, is like directing this episode, and you can tell he's very passionate about the story uh, mm-hmm. that he's telling. It's just well directed, well edited, just a great Sentai episode. Uh, and I'm very excited for next week because yeah. he's also directing next week, so that's great. Mm-hmm. It's gonna, it's it's uh, it feels like King Oger is finally back on its feet, and that's that's pretty exciting. Yeah, it feels like we we had a bit of stumble of the Cure Oger thing, and now we're back on it. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like it's been stumbling for longer, but we can both agree it's back on it now. Yeah, it's 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 better than ever. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, 
Unless you count Doctor Who, I didn't watch any Tokusatsu this week. <laughs> Whoa, what Doctor Who did you watch? Tell uh, me all about it. I want to hear right. this. All right, I guess the uh, detour. Uh, I started watching the Seventh Doctor serials. I'm not going in order because I heard th- I tried the first season and I was like, "This is boring as shit." Like, yeah, the first Doctor. season is rough. They were kind of getting their footing after a bunch of people got the f- the boot at the end of the Sixth Doctor era. Yeah, but so I started with Dragonfire because that's when Ace shows up for the first time. Yeah, that Dragon- one's all right. It's got the worst cliffhanger in all of Doctor Who. Oh, yeah, 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 right. yeah, the worst cliffhanger. The, the cliffhanger was very funny. I thought it was funny. Uh, mm-hmm. In, like, a bad way, but, like, still. Um, and Ace, I thought they, there were some good character moments, but it kind of overall felt, eh, boring. I like the titular dragon that they made. That was a really cool mm-hmm. suit. Um, then I got to Remembrance of the Daleks. Oh, my oh. favorite classic Doctor Who series. Everyone loves it, and I can see why. It's really good. I mean, Jeffrey from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is on there. Yeah, so, and, and he's in a really poignant scene. Yeah, I was like, wait, do I recognize that guy? And then I'm like, oh, it is, it's Jeffrey! It's the mm-hmm. funny but- butler's guy, and he's making this really poignant, like, scene with Sylvester McCoy, and it goes hard! Like, it's, the, the entire episode, like, I feel like if it was done today, it would have been felt a bit tacky. I don't know. It feels like it, it was right place, right time to do that kind of story. Because yeah. it kind of t- t- titles of a lot of race relations that were like prominent around the 1960s uh, British. And and, um, and it's very it's very appropriate because it's in a story where, the, where they're traveling back to literally, I think it's like two or three days before or after the first Doctor Who story takes place. Yeah. And it's the return of the Daleks after a not not very long but significant break from being in the show and it's the first time the daleks are really badass and scary again it's the first time you see a dalek go upstairs um and then but it also has like two of or actually three of the best scenes of the daleks getting beaten cuz there's the scene where ace beats the shit out of a dalek with a bat yeah uh, that was the, good there's the scene where the Doctor basically tells Davros to fuck off in the greatest wrestling promo of all time. Oh, yeah. oh was then, that the rice pudding scene? Yep. And then there's the scene at the end of the episode where there's the one Dalek left, and the Doctor just shows up and convinces it to kill itself. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's... Ah, it's, it's, uh, I, I, I knew, like, the seventh Doctor was always, like, of all the classic Who, the one that interested me the most. And I'm so glad all of classic Who's on Tubi now. Mm-hmm. Like, all of that's available i know there's like lost episodes but like i'm so glad because now i get to watch a lot of this stuff for the first time like finally get like after hearing about reviews i'm like wow i can actually like watch it (laughs) on a streaming site that i like that's free it's uh uh, did you watch any other episodes or is that it for right now i uh i got halfway through my next serial but i should finish it soon i'll talk about it maybe later i don't know i guess for the for a couple weeks i'll talk about doctor who yeah this is this has been your weekly doctor who jump scare everybody i hope you enjoyed it yeah it, it will happen again uh, all right. I watched a few more episodes of Agito this week. I watched 18 through 20. Uh, and man, um, I've been inching closer and closer to feeling this way, but I think it's official to me. This is the Hojo show guest starring three different common writers. Yeah. Hojo is great. <laughs> like, I, I keep seeing memes about him on Twitter, or at least a one specific meme that mm-hmm. like everyone's like, what Agito reference on random shit post Twitter account. And it's like, yeah, Hojo, international dickhead, let's go. Yeah, because he's clearly like the template for Kusaka. Um, Because he is he is a real fucking piece of shit sometimes. But you also get where he's coming from. Like, he's not as cartoonish as Kusaka. His dickishness is very realistic. And because of certain scenes here and there, you get why he acts the way he does. Like, in episode 19, there's actually a really emotional scene that gets you on his side for a minute. Because he figures out his mentor, who he brought in to help him take down the G3 team, um, committed a murder that connects back to their shared past. And that completely fucks up everything that they're doing and he's like man i care about justice too much i have to bring you in even though it totally ruins everything i've been trying to do for the last 19 episodes and there's like a brief moment where you where you actually feel for him a little bit you're like oh no you poor boy and and then the very next episode 
he gets Hikawa assigned to him as a bodyguard, and he just uses it to constantly troll the fuck out of him. Like, there's a scene where he goes like, Hikawa, do you think people are inherently good or evil? And Hikawa's like, ah, I don't know, man, this job, it, it makes it kind of hard to believe in people sometimes. And he's like, eh, well, I for one believe people are inherently good, because I, myself, am a good person. And I laughed so hard I had to pause the episode. So, yeah, I think that's become a, like a meme for a bit, and it, it's a good one. So, yeah, uh, and and I mean the 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 stuff with Shoichi and Ryu in these episodes is pretty good too. But like, it's it's the Hojo show. Yeah, he's your favorite. He's your special little guy. <laughs> he's my special little man. He's 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 he, he's my he's my trash baby. That's what yeah. he is. My own personal trash baby. I'm finally a real Tumblr girl. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, I see. We're talking about Doctor Who, and now we talked about Tumblr sexy bit. We 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 accomplished it. Baby. We did it. We're finally popular on Tumblr.com. Just in time for Buster to plug their stuff. Yeah. Hi, I'm Buster Corp. I do too many videos on too many things. I recently released a, a pretty successful, by my standards, uh, Doom Patrol video uh, on the comic book. Uh, one of the comic books. I, I thought it was pretty. I thought. But both the comic and this video was pretty good, so please check them out. Uh, also, on social media is wherever you can find me. I don't know. Go go peruse the links and pick one. <laughs> hey, howdy, howdy. I'm the Vacuuminator. I make YouTube videos. They're things. You can check them out at the Vacuuminator on YouTube. I just put out a video this week on my favorite character in all of fiction, Supergirl, my special little girl. Ooh, that sounded weird. I'm never going to say that again. Uh, but you can find it on YouTube. You can also find all my content across the various social media platforms. I have an Instagram. It's at the underscore Vacuuminator. I also have a Blue Sky. It's at the Vacuuminator.bsky.social. And I have a Tumblr. It's the Vacuuminator.tumblr. Com. But folks, that does it for this week in Tokusatsu. Happy Thanksgiving or whatever you're doing this week. And uh, we'll see you back here next week for whatever happens that week in Tokusatsu.